allegedly there's a stat running around there that over 60% of loan officers are not going to renew their 2024 licensing bill. So you're going to see a, a ton of loan officers exit the business. You should be exiting the business. Call Center LO for almost a decade. No realtors, no referral partners, no nothing. Now you're excelling in the business, doing three to four closings a month, and it's all purchase realtor base. So what was it about you that other people can learn from that you should have been one of those stats that left the business? What is it about you that kept you in the fight and now you're, now you're winning? Hey guys, Wally Alibieri. All right, so what is 24-7 mindset? Most times when you hear 24-7, you're thinking what? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just grinding, hustling. You know, I learned over time a 24 year career in mortgage and multiple other businesses that I own is unfortunately, you'll get burnt out. I became an absent father, I became an absent husband, and I became a poor business leader because I was trying to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, trying to build a business, maintain a business. When I learned how to work smarter, not just harder, by doing things the best way it could be done, instead of just simply doing my best, I learned how to work only 24 hours a week, seven months a year, while I got paid from the business residually, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can do the same. Welcome to the show. 24 seven mindset. Mm -hmm. The goal of today is I want to spotlight. So kind of put this out there. I'm a big fan of being a multiplier in the business instead of an addition in the business. And what I've really enjoyed about Matt is he's an absolute sponge. There hasn't been one single thing. I've said, Matt, you've got to be able to do A, B, and C. And then Matt's come back and said, no, I, that, I want to do it this way instead or that way or any of that nature. So what I want to talk a lot about today is, Matt, where were you? What did you do? And where are you kind of now? Yeah, so where I was, I've been doing this close to about 10 years now um, in the mortgage industry. So started in my early 20s and then grew up basically in the call center background. So it was just handed leads on a daily basis was more of a turn and burn mentality. Um, so did that for a long period of time. Previously was at a shop that was like 90% refinance. And it was great for a season, obviously, especially during COVID. And then obviously as things changed, uh, I realized pretty quickly that, you know, that's not going to be sustainable. And it was also, I think, during a time in my career where I really wanted to grow. And so at that time, I think we had met at the Todd Duncan um, High Trust Sales Academy in Frisco just this last year in um, in December. So starting in December, you know, I had pretty much zero referrals, no referral partners, nothing. It was 100% leads. Um, I started going full time in April of 2023 uh, to 100% referral based, and just following the coaching plan, following your coaching. You know, I've been averaging about three and a half loans a month consistently. I have four, um, four agents who are uh, 100% on board with the, the high trust sales process and the coaching process and the partnership process. It's not just a relationship, but a, a strategic partnership. And um, just by following that plan, it um, was really cool to see um, some of that consistency early on from zero to three and a half loans right away um, on average. Well, I think what's, what's really impressive is you know there's allegedly there's a stat running around there that over 60 percent of loan officers are not going to renew their 2024 licensing bill so you're going to see a, a ton of loan officers exit the business you should be exiting the business call center lo for almost a decade no realtors no referral partners no nothing and now you're excelling in the business, doing three to four closings a month, and it's all purchase realtor base. So what was it about you that, that other people can learn from, that you should have been one of those stats that left the business? What is, what is it about you that kept you in the fight, and now you're, now you're winning? Yeah, I think I, 
I mean, I love mortgages and I love how we serve people. And I think um, to answer your question, it's not really about me, but more of a testament to the process, right? And just goes to show, hey, if if this guy who had no experience uh, building relationships with realtors or other affinity partners um, can hop into that uh, that type of business, just following a set plan from people who have gone before me and have done it very, very successfully like yourself, um, well, then I can do it too. And so uh, it's really like you always say, just those daily little steps um, consistently that over time build up. And so focusing on, you know, uh, with my coach, just my one thing, for this year. And instead of trying to do the million things I could do that a lot of loan officers are trying to tackle, just focusing on uh, one or two really specific things that will help me build my database, which, you know, we talked about will eventually be my data bank. Uh, And then over time, I could add on some other things um, once that foundation is laid. But I would just say getting that has really helped. Well, I think one thing you do extremely well is you prioritize. So whenever we've done our face-to-face or phone or our coaching sessions pretty much where I love so much about you prioritize what you want to accomplish and you laser focus on that specific priority. You don't prioritize and prioritize and prioritize and prioritize and before you know you got nine priorities running around. So one thing that I feel like you really excel from that I, I feel the 24-7 mindset t- teammates of ours out there really need to understand is business planning. So if you remember, we met in like November, December of last year. Mm-hmm. And one of the first things I wanted to teach you was, okay, this is how you do a business plan. And this is how you plan to succeed versus plan to fail. There was no winging it. And when I've watched you go from your previous business plan to the one you've got now implementing, I didn't all that involved. I mean, the first time I asked you to do a business plan, were you like, Who's this wacko and, and, you know, is this really going to work? Or like, how did that evolve to where now you really focus on your plan? Yeah. So at first it was hard not to compare because, you know, we saw people like you or some other uh, loan officers who have done what you've done very successfully. And and it's like, well, they've got a concierge team and they've got their social media dialed in and they've got this and they, so they have like six or seven prongs that they do very, very well. And I'm like, well, how do I do all of that right now? And just realize very quickly, I can't do all of that right now. And even though I wanted, my attention was maybe being drawn away by some of those other things that I know I eventually need to introduce into my business. It really helped me, like you said, laser focus on, hey, what's most important today? Because none of that other stuff matters if I don't have realtor partners and financial planners, CPAs, and I'm not building a book of business and I'm not finding avenues to bring in leads on a consistent basis. Once I do that and then set a process to handle that, then I can implement some of those other things that are maybe not as important today. So I think having that really helped me push a ton of other stuff away and just focus on the thing that matters most for, for me right now. Awesome. So I think what's also super cool is, um, your ability to understand the model and the unfortunate thing about our business, there's a lot of super talented people in our business, uh, but there's not many super skilled people in our business. And what, what was so exciting to watch you blossom was you focus more about the skills than you did the talents. And one of the skills that we talked about, we, we've done coaching on was truly loving on your clients. And when I saw that Facebook post you made it last week or so about the handwritten notes that you're putting out there, like it it warmed my heart because I know how big of a difference you make in your clients' lives. How did that evolve? Where how that idea come about and you know what results have you seen from that? Yeah. So I think the model, especially you know, that you teach, right, is it's all about adding value and you can't be, uh, what did you say? You can't add value until you're valuable. And so uh, realizing that, okay, I have to find out what my you know, uh, unique value proposition is uh, and then harness that while implementing the model. And so uh, you know, realize I did not get, do a good job in the past of taking care of clients 
and letting them know uh, how much they mean to me and serving them well so that they become uh, they become my marketing for me, referring people for me. And then, of course, doing some of the other things to extract those referrals. But yeah, it was, re- it was really cool. I mean, last week I was able to send out uh, nine thank you cards. And, and those were all from referrals from agents or financial planners or agents past database by doing mortgage efficiency checkups, where even a couple months ago, maybe I was sending out one a week. And this week I sent out nine. And so that's really cool because to me, that means it's more conversations, connections. Those eight people that I did mortgage efficiency checkup for last week are now my client for life. And I know they're going to be referring people to me moving forward and, and referring people back to that agent. So, Yeah. So we cannot gloss over. So what I need everybody to understand is this dude, what, eight, 10 months ago was a call center LO. Literally should not be here, period but he's excelling in this marketplace. And you hear what he just said? He's doing mortgage efficiency checkups, part of their client concierge model, but he's doing mortgage efficiency checkups to his realtor's database. He doesn't have a database because he was a call center OO. So help him understand how did that conversation go so they can learn to reduplicate that with their realtors. How do you get to your realtor database? What did you learn from that coaching? Yeah, so just following the model, right? Which is uh, how can I add value and ultimately bring them more, partner together to bring them more referrals. And so I went over with uh, this particular agent here who does about 50 closings a year. And uh, just let them know, hey, with the mortgage efficiency checkup, you know, you have you do a great job of touching base throughout the year with, you know, birthdays and um, proof of, of uh, production cards, right? Where they show that they just closed X amount of deals that month. But I said, as a, as a loan officer, I have a lot more reason to reach out to your clients to add value than maybe uh, you would in this particular area, because that's obviously our area of expertise. So, you know, it's your if I can add an extra layer of value by reaching out to your clients and basically just acting as an extension of you. So they know that, Hey, it's not really just Matt that's providing this service. It's actually the real estate agent that's providing me this service along with Matt. And they're kind of one entity. And so he really liked that idea. I showed him an example of what a mortgage efficiency checkup looks like um, on his house. And he really liked it. And then so from there, I just said, hey, it's super easy. We'll make a 60 second video of us together. Um, I sent out a postcard of us together, letting them know we're going to connect with something called Milestone, which is basically like um, HomeBot. It's like a competitor of HomeBot. But anyway, so we're going to enroll them in that. Once they got the postcard, we sent them the video. Two days later, I started calling through all of them. Um, And that week, which was last week, um, I did eight mortgage efficiency checkups. Uh, you know, 50% of them had never had applied for homestead exemption, 30% of them because taxes and insurance have gone up here in Texas so much were short or negative on their escrow account. So it's got two CPA referrals, one, five, excuse me, two financial planner referrals, one CPA referral, four new uh, policies written for the insurance agent, um, and then found out one guy was going to be retiring and wants to sell his house to set an appointment with the realtor to list his house and then found out one guy was moving out of state and is moving into a state I can help him with. So I have a, a consultation with that guy tomorrow to help him buy his house in the new state. So very productive just from one week. <laughs> you are an absolutely flipping rock star. Oh my God. So went to, you met some old guy in Plano named Wally. You learned mortgage efficiency checkups. You learn how to adopt a realtor's database. You started doing eight mortgage efficiency checkups to a database last week. You got, so give me that number again. You got how many financial advisor referrals? Uh, two financial planner referrals, and they've already made appointments with the financial planner. All right. One, two financial advisor referrals. How many CPA referrals? Uh, one CPA. All right. And then you got four insurance referrals now? Four insurance. Then you got one listing agent or a listing appointment yeah, back to the agent to talk about listing his house when he retires at the end of the year. And you got one for a free approval. 
And then one for a pre-approval appointment tomorrow who's buying out of state. So that's 11 income opportunities that you just generate. And then you made deposits in those relationships that are going to flourish and provide you opportunities in the future. All because you were brave enough to implement. And that's the number one thing I absolutely just love about Matt is he's able to digest a model, believes in me and the model, and just starts implementing and starts going off. I mean, that's absolutely exceptional. How do you feel your, how's your relationship now with that realtor that gave you access to their database? Great. I um, was sending him screenshots of texts from his clients who said, I love what you guys are doing. Keep it up. I sent him emails breaking down. Uh, uh, I, I sent him an email recap of our conversation and the forms and whatnot and included him on those emails. Uh, and he loves that. I mean, he picks up my call now every time I call him. And he loves the fact that I'm actively looking out for him to get his clients back to him so he can close more transactions because his ultimate goal is to be able to work less and spend more time with his family. And so he knows that I'm doing things behind the scenes to, to bring him a business. So he doesn't have to spend as much time doing it. And because of that, he's just been, uh, you know, we've done three transactions together in the last two months with this one agent that he's referred to me. I think it's what, what's huge about that is, and again, we want to focus on being a multiplier down in, in addition right? That agent works in a real estate office. That agent has other friends in those real estate offices that they have influence with. Keep doing such a great job for this one realtor. And from there, they'll introduce you to other agents in their office. And that's how you'll be able to grow and scale when eight, 10 months ago, you were a call center. Yeah. And what's super cool about all this, Matt, is now, now you're learning how to build a career. Before you were only learning how to make a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Now you're able to learn how to build a career. And what's super exciting about that is uh, I don't, I don't see you stopping. So fast forward for me, let's go three years from now. Where do you see your business at? Uh, three years from now, I'd like to add, I'd like to be at about 30 million a year okay. by year three. So my goal with my coach going from zero referrals to 100% referral based was to do about 12 to 13 million my first year, which would basically be like April to April. Yeah. Um, and so currently uh, on pace, I'm a little bit over pace um, to do 12 to 13 million in my first year. And then I'd like to add close to or around 10 million each year until I get to about 50 million in year five. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, you know, the biggest thing I want people to understand is the, the key is implementation. Um, we can sit here and talk about how phenomenal Matt is, but I want everybody to understand how human Matt is. So what were some failures? Where, where did you get the door slammed in your face? Where did you screw things up? And what would you learn from it? Yeah, so that particular agent that we're just talking about, I met with them before I started implementing all of this and basically went nowhere. Um, and ended up just kind of being a lunch where he said he already has a lender and he just went to lunch because, you know, we uh, had some mutual friends and I was new in town and wanted to be nice. Um, and so that conversation, I wasn't really adding value and I didn't, I wasn't well prepared. And I think that was a huge thing is not only learning these strategies, but feeling prepared and confident enough to talk about them, even though I hadn't implemented them before. Uh, I met with a whole office of realtors one time and it uh, felt kind of awkward and didn't go very well Yeah, and uh, didn't really get any relationships out of that. Um, and yeah, so early on, I just felt like I met with people and didn't see a whole lot of traction until I just kept practicing uh, some of the things we were learning. And now I feel much more confident implementing this stuff because now I've done it once or twice and now I've actually seen the fruit of it. And so I can actually had a partner planning meeting this morning with a real estate agent. And I actually went over exactly what we did to transfer trust to me with this other agent. And I was confident enough to show her emails and texts and our strategy and how great it was. 
and some of the referrals we got out of it and she loved it and she's uh, on board. So we're going to be doing the same thing with her in the next uh, week or two. It's absolutely awesome. man. I think it's what's super cool about it, again, you're, you're multiplying your success and the, the, the unfortunate thing out there is so many people don't have the tools that you've learned and all they can do is addition their success. You becoming a multiplier. It is helping you focus on how to be a professional in this game called mortgage instead of just an amateur in this game called mortgage and just, you know, running after checks. So, um, how has this kind of impacted your family? Uh, it's been great. So we're actually going, I think before it was a lot harder to take time off, right? Because I mean, you know how your pipeline works. It's always rolling. So you always have to be working and the call center, of course, you make less and they're also very, you know, it's all about, but keep your butt in your chair. And uh, whereas this, it's it, the buck stops with me. So if we're not producing, it's it's on me to make changes, which I actually really like. Um, and it's although it's a lot more work up front laying the foundation, uh, I would definitely say I'm less stressed, even though it's uh, more unknown because I'm the one getting the business. Uh, you know, my wife and I are taking a week long vacation in two weeks and just being able to turn, turn everything off and knowing that I have, uh, a team in place to kind of help me fund out anything that's going to close that week or take any calls for applications. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot less stress. And I'm, you know, I think a lot more in love with the business than I was, you know, even during COVID during the refinance boom. Yeah, what's also super cool is you keep building this. You know, during COVID, it was great. You know, especially being a call center, I'm sure you made a made a financial killing in that space. But now you're able to grow your income and grow your time off. Yeah. Before in the call center world, you can only grow your income and you could not grow your time off. I'm a big fan of hey, how do I build a business plan? How do I build a model that not only doubles my income but also doubles my time off? And if you have to look through those lenses you'll be able to excel at every level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's exactly what I love about it. And I love that, uh, obviously, like you've seen in your success, it's consistent. Uh, even I'm sure during uh, a difficult market like this, uh, you're not dying on the vine, you know? And so I like the fact that it's building something consistent. It's not about a quick uh, cash grab during a refinance boom, but a long-term business plan. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good, man. As we kind of wrap up, I've asked you a ton of questions. What questions do you have for me? As I'm kind of uh, continuing trying to uh, grow my relationships with my, my realtors, I think on top of that, I'm also trying to learn to add value to financial planners or div divorce attorneys or uh, CPAs. And I think I'm in that place where I was back in December of kind of starting from relatively zero there of, uh, you know, what tools should I be utilizing? What books are you reading? You know, what, what are some ways we're adding value to that? Cause they've loved what I have to say. Uh, but I think implementing beyond that of let's start working with your database seems to be kind of where I'm finding a little bit of resistance or I shouldn't say resistance, but stand still. Well, I think what you have to acknowledge and what you have to understand, Matt, a realtor, a CPA, a family will attorney, an insurance person, a uh, financial advisor, a divorce attorney, an estate planner, all of them have the same challenge. So they have the same number one challenge. And in its client retention, which means adding value to their clients. So the same way that you learn to add value to a realtor's database is the same way you're going to add value to a financial advisor's database, a CPA's database, and so on and so on. So what I always say is, to what my, the series of questions I talk about is, is say, say if you're a financial advisor. So Matt, one thing that's made me really successful in my business is every year I take the worst part of my game, mortgage game, and I focus on it for 12 months until it's the best part of my game. And if I consistently do that, where am I going to be three years from now, 10 years from now, so on and so on. So where do you feel the worst part of your financial advisor game is right now? 
I'd probably say eight out of 10 times, they go straight for client retention, adding value, um, anything to do with like a database. Mm -hmm. right? So then I want to expand that. I want to create a little bit more pain. And the pain that I like to create is, well, tell me a little bit of what is that caused in your business? What is that cause or cost? Oh, cause. So what did that cost? Well, I lost this much money or I lost these many clients or this client moved some of their assets over, whatever the case is. Well, what have you tried, Matt? Uh, then you tell me all the things that you tried. Clearly all of them were unsuccessful. Then I ask you, so what do you plan on trying next? I want it, I want them to understand that I'm the solution to the big pain I just created. And if I'm the solution, I always say, well, the way that I, I've experienced the same frustration that you feel, the way that I've learned to be able to succeed in that situation is mortgage efficiency checkups. So these, this is the value that I add, and that's where I got the referral from my realtor's database to be able to refer to you, Mr. Financial Advisor, like you did earlier. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to continue with you. So may, with your permission, can you please send me over your mortgage statement? All my rates at 2%, Wally. I don't care. That's perfect. 2%, 1%, 0%, doesn't matter. Let me do a mortgage efficiency checkup for you. Let me show you my mortgage code show and cost analysis. Let me show you my mortgage coach or whatever software that you use. So you can see what type of value I add to my clients. And hopefully you'll give me the opportunity to add that same kind of high value to your clients and help you with that client retention because I'll be a third party endorsing. Yeah. This is recorded and it'll be in the, in the private, private Facebook group 24 seven months. Out, so you can go watch it again. But I'd say that's that's your next milestone that I'll love to see you go over. Now, one thing I want to remind you, we've talked about this before, and this is really, really important, is that you've done a great job getting a realtor's database. You've done a great job pulling out referrals. You've done a great job of giving out those referrals. But you're not a doormat. You are not a doormat. You're not Mother Teresa. You're not just going to give for the sake of giving. You've got to receive back. The way you receive back is have clarity up front. Hey, I sent you a referral last week or yesterday. Do you have anybody you want me to talk to? Oh, you don't have anybody today? Okay, I'll, I'll follow you up with, follow up with you at the end of the week. I'll follow up with you next week. Be brave enough to ask for referrals back in return of the referrals that you're giving. Mm -hmm. so the first year I tried to do this, I gave out, I don't know, it was, it was something stupid. It was like, 70 some odd referrals in the first like quarter of the year and i got like a four back and it was because two major reasons i was too big of a wuss to let them know hey up front i'm sending you a referral but i want a referral back number one number two i just felt it was a good will of man or woman to refer me back and you give and you receive naturally and life doesn't work that way you've got to be in their process and when mm -hmm. I learned on a consistent referrals, successful people have a model. It doesn't matter if you're a CPA, financial advisor, whatever the case is. I need to be injected at this specific part of the model. So for me, for a financial advisor, they do an annual financial review for their clients. Mm -hmm. So my response is, well, how, how much of a heads up do you get documents from your clients before you do the annual financial review? Let's say about 30 days. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask for a copy of the mortgage statement when you um, ask for those documents 30 days before you read it. So I got them to inject that in that process. And I got with the assistant that receives those documents. And I said, when this mortgage statement comes in, email it over to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mortgage coach total cost analysis with a recorded video. video. I'm also going to make them a whole lot. So when the financial advisor is meeting with the client to do the annual financial review. They click on one button, my video plays, and everything is right there, right in front of them in the conference room. And what's going to be super cool about that is, hey, if you want to reach out to Molly, great. If you don't, this is a free service. Um, but I get a ton of referrals from when they do the annual financial review and play my video. 
But I had, it had, to be, it had to be two things. I had to be brave enough to be able to ask for referrals. And number two, I had to be put, I had to structure myself in their process. Mm-hmm. And I haven't done that very well. Yeah. So I can implement that. Yeah. It's just at the end of the day, there's no point of, I see zero um, worth if I become anybody's doormat. I know the value that I bring by generating referrals. And when I refer a CPA or a financial advisor, I need them to see the same value in me for them to want to refer me. Mm-hmm. So I'll, yeah. I'll definitely keep the accountability up on my end to you. Um, but that's probably where I'm going to take some more coaching moving forward that you've got to be able to give and take, not just get. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. All right. right. Any closing words? I think that's it. I, uh, I appreciate it. It was a great conversation. Awesome. Well, I think you brought a lot of value to everybody in the community. And you, if you're in the page, thanks so much for being part of our community. So thank you so much for listening today. It means a lot you took time out of your day. I don't take that lightly. Understand very clearly that you're very busy. With that being said, if you want to continue your journey and learn more about 24-7 Mindset, if you're on Facebook, which I'm going to guess you are, then go to 24-7 Mindset on Facebook and join the private community. I do coaching tips on there on a daily basis, but from scripts on there to systems on there, models, and the ability to be able to grow and scale a business while you have a quality of life. Hope to see you there.